All right, let's go ahead and solve a question for our exam preparation. This can be a fee exam, this can be midterm in, in, in your class. Okay, so let's read the question carefully. Water flows in a 90 degree bend with a velocity of one meter per second. Okay, so I basically gave you that the velocity is constant and obviously the area is constant too, so that has to be from the constant ratio of mass. The pressure upstream is given to me as 50 kilopascal and the downstream read discharges the atmosphere as a jet. So what this means is that if I'm using gauge terminology, the pressure over here will be equal to zero if I'm using gauge, okay? Obviously this uh, information given to you also in gauge to be consistent, okay? So and the question is asking what's the horizontal and vertical components of the force flow exerts on the bend? And I give you the volume of the water within the bend. Um, okay. First thing is this. Um, you can see over here that on page 186 of the FE reference manual, you have this equation. Actually, this equation is applicable to here. You simply can plug this into your numbers and you can get it. But I will go ahead and do more fundamental. It's not a huge uh, amount of work. As you will see, it's very similar to this. So obviously, I need to use the conservation momentum because the forces are being asked. The first thing I will do is I, will, I would like to get the... Uh, basically the control volume will be right over here, right? The border within this uh, bend. Now I'm gonna draw the free body diagram of that bend. So roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so I gave that there will be a P1A1 here, right? Because I know P1. How about P2A2? So that P2 is zero, so that's not there. Um, then I will get the weight, right? So the weight, because uh, I gave you the volume of the water within the bend. So as you may remember, we need to multiply. So basically the weight will be equal to specific weight times the volume. So I have that information. So I simply can write, to, write over here. Okay. Then I will get myself Rx. Again, I mentioned this a couple of times, but I align this Rx and our way arbitrarily and I get what I need. But also I want to highlight, uh, I will repeat this at the end of the question as well, but this, this, what I'm plotting over here is this is the force that's required to hold this in place, okay? But the question is asking me what is the force flow exerts on the bend? So I have to multiply by negative one, okay? So it's like Newton's third law, action versus reaction, all right. Okay, so let's get to business. Um, the first, uh, you know, choices are given to me in horizontal, so I'm going to start by that, okay? So the summation of the forces in the x direction will be equal to, um, over the exits, let's call this exits, row exit, which is actually only row, v x exit, v n exit, a exit minus, over the inlets, I mean, this question is on the easier side, so I have uh, only one inlet, one outlet, so this kind of simplifies. And looking at the forces in the x direction from my uh, uh, free bed diagram, you can see that I have myself Rx, which is being asked, plus P1, P1 was 50,000, 50 kilopascal, and A was, the, the diameter is 0.2, so I'm gonna write 0.1 square like this, right? Pi R square, or pi D square over four, up to you, will be equal to, on the right hand side, I have myself density, density is 1000. VXE, VX exit. So you can see this is the inlet, this is the exit, right? Section two. So the component of this in the X direction will be zero, right? So I have zeros, I don't wanna write the rest of it, okay? So this term dropped out basically, this is gone. Minus, I have 1000. Vx inlet. So looking at the inlet, inlet is this way, right? And I was given this as to be one, so one meter per second. Vx inlet, Vn inlet is one, and the area is the same as uh, basically pi 0.1 square. Okay, so that's what I have over here. So if I plug the numbers in, you can see 1000, so I get myself Rx is equal to 51,000, uh, well, uh, Minus, right? So I get myself Rx is equal to minus 510 pi, okay? So if I plug this into my calculator, I get myself um, right around uh, minus 1602 newton as my force in the x direction, okay? But as I mentioned that uh, I am asking you what is the force the flow exerts on the bend. So you need to multiply this by 
negative. So you will get yourself this way. And actually, it makes sense. So think about this. So let's say that this is on a wheel. Okay. So let's say that this is on a wheel. So, I mean, and think of this water is coming in here and heating in here and turning, right? So if I let it go, it's going to go in this direction, right? It's just, you know, let's say there's no friction. It's going to just fly off, right? So it, the force has to be in the positive x direction for that, okay? Okay, um, so this was kind of, you know, simple now that I know that I don't even have to do the part B, but it's important just for our practice purposes because that's the whole point of this. So I simply go ahead and write Fy will be equal to over the exits, row exit, v y exit, v n exit, a exit minus summation sign over the inlet, row inlet, v y inlet, v n inlet, a inlet. So then f y going up here, I simply look at my free bird diagram. It turns off r y minus uh, the weight. The weight will be uh, basically nine thousand eight hundred. So this is. Um, Newton per meter cube, right? So how, how am I going to get it? It's 9.8 times uh, 1,000. The, the, the density of water is right around 1,000 times 9.8. I get myself now 9,800 Newton per meter cube. It's my specific weight and the volume is 0 0.1 meter cube. That's given in the question statement. Um, will be equal to, so looking in here, now um, let's just go ahead and write in the order. So I have the exit first, the exit will be 1,000. That's the density. So V, Y, exit. Looking over here, so Y is pointing up, right? So obviously I didn't draw it, but you, you know, like uh, X is this way, Y is that way, right? So you can see that V, Y, 2, which is the exit over here, I will get myself 1, which is the meter per second. And looking at V, N inlet, so that will be 1, 2, and A, A exit will be 0 0.1 square. I'm not sure I misspoke, but I meant to say VNE over here, so V2 basically. And looking over here, so I'm gonna take a shortcut, but I expect you to know this. What will be this VY1? So it's in this direction, the component of this in the y direction will be zero, so that's gone. So basically, this is it, okay, in terms of what I have. So I, when I write this, I'm gonna get myself RY to be what, uh, 980, right, uh, plus 1010, 10, 10 pi. So I'm assuming I should have calculated properly, I'm assuming I did it. So 10,011 Newtons is what I should have because that's what this choice says, right? Um, so I have a negative sign in front of it. I explained in the Rx part as well. So basically this 1011 Newton in the positive direction is the force that I need to hold it. Again, I'm going to make the same argument in here. So think about this now. Let's say that the wheels are over here, right? Right. So forget about these wheels now. Um, so what will happen is if, you know, like the water is shooting out. So what will happen to this? So it's going to apply a force in this direction, right? And that's what I'm asking you. What is the force? Read vertical component of the force flow exerts. So it's going to be minus sign, okay? So you can see that the choice in this particular case turns out to be A. Okay, thank you for watching this segment. I hope it helps you. Have a good day.